and welcome back to Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai with the Scramble of the Far East. So we're going to go ahead and start a new campaign in, in this. And as always, I've allowed you guys to vote on which faction we are going to go ahead and play as. We've already played as the British and the Russians, so they were out of the vote. So the other ones were up for grabs and I merged all the native to Asia factions into one uh, voting block. But with all of that said, Prussia won quite handedly with almost half of the vote. 44% of you uh, out of I think almost a thousand people voted on it. And 44% uh, of you decided that we're going to play as the Prussians. And that is what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and play a long campaign. We're going to go ahead and play as the highest difficulty. We're going to make sure no advisor. And with that introduction, I think we'll jump straight into it and see what our chances are to go ahead and colonize Japan as the Kingdom of Prussia. And so we've made it onto the campaign map. We've got a mission issued here to increase our faction's development level. That's going to take a while though. The more important thing and the more pressing thing is the fact that we start right next to the Northern Alliance, which is the biggest clan to begin with. They've got four territories. Not only that, they're allied with a fifth territory down here in Fukushima. So we're almost completely surrounded by the Northern Alliance and their allies, and we will be completely surrounded if we do not go to war right at the start with the Eshigo territory down here, because they will ally with them as well, and then I'm boxed in. We're nowhere to go but the I sea. We'll still Although eventually go to the sea, but I would coffee. rather go by land to start off with. So we're going to go ahead and start with war right away. Um, don't worry though, even though the, the Northern Allies are friendly with these guys, they will actually seek to ally us right from the start. So I guess you kind of have two options, or more, you have more options, but you, we also have an option to try and nip it in the bud by attacking the Northern Alliance to begin with, but I think we'll take an easier chunk, if, as since we are a foreign power and we'll have to convince the local population uh, that we should be ruling this area, which currently, even it in our home province, is only 20%, where most of them actually wants the Shogun to take over, which is the same for the Northern Alliance. So, um, yeah, we're starting off with quite a problem. And I don't want to add on to the problem by declaring war with the biggest enemy faction uh, on the map and right next door to us. But we are going to go south. As it is winter and our army moves pretty slow, we're going to have to be stuck in the snow for one turn. And in so doing, we would lose quite a bit of manpower doing that, so I'm thinking we'll wait until spring to actually attack. What we're going to do in the meantime is I'm going to start building up the farms. We're also going to build up the trade port. We're going to go ahead and recruit troops to make sure that we can hold down the province. So we're going to get five of these colonial infantry, which should be enough to keep the province under our control as we go on a expedition for war and then I'm gonna get a ship to discover as many different trade partners as possibly. The thing though is, right in the beginning here, we're not gonna make a lot through trade. It's not like in Empire and Napoleon that you make a substantial amount, especially in the beginning, from trade. What we really need is special resources that we can trade. Um, like some of these and especially it's good if we can set up so we can trade back home to Europe there's a few trade nodes set up that we can set up trade with in different areas down here I think there's one we can't see them now it's not important though because I think you need 
the technology to open up those uh, trade posts. We're going to start with infrastructure because we already have military doctrine. With that said, everything's set in order. Unless there's an upset, I'll meet you guys in spring when the um, military campaigns will start and we will march down on our enemies down south and lay siege to their fort. And with that said, I'll end turn. Right, so just as I told you, the Northern Alliance will extend an offer of alliance. They will even pay me to ally with them. So that's a good start. We can, we can keep the North under control, or we don't have to worry about the Northern Alliance coming after us. Interesting here that he's got, he's got some interesting pictures here, uh, idle pictures back here. And it's, it's like, uh, you know, young teenage girls putting Justin Bieber's on the wall. Or some other, you know, popular character. Here's uh, Wellington, Napoleon. And I can't really tell what battlefield this is supposed to be. But it could very well be uh, Waterloo. Interesting. Anyways, we'll accept the offer. Finally, springtime. After, uh, I think it's five turns? Or is, has it been four? It must have been, it takes me, what? It doesn't matter, there's been quite a few turns. I haven't really been able to complete anything than being able to recruit more troops to hold this area down. And the area is now happy enough that uh, a majority of the population is exactly pro-Prussian. And I could probably withdraw four infantry units from the capital to draw down to the rest of the army and we're gonna start marching down now on the enemy now the reason why I bring these two others I think I've explained this quite a few times when I've been playing Shogun 2 before is that um, when you bring the generals as their own entities while you fight the battles they will get experience for themselves. If they're part of a general's army, they won't gain any experience. Like, if I put them part of this army, they wouldn't gain experience. So as we lay the siege and we attack this fort right here, the, g the main general will, of course, get the most experience. But these guys will get a little bit of experience as well. And since the council, the same kind of council that you have in Napoleon and Empire, where you have, you know, different guys in charge of different things, like trade and um, army, navy and so on. You want a wide variety of generals with good leadership skills that you can put in charge of this, these different things. So that makes, so it's good to have a broad uh, base of a lot of good generals. Uh, with that said, we are inching ourselves closer to the first battle of this series. And so I will go ahead and end turn once more and then we'll lay siege to uh, the enemy province. And with that, the first ship has been built. And we'll go ahead now and move down along the coast here and discover as many different factions as possible. Actually, I should go around Noto. Because as we take this, we will discover this faction right here. So we want to move as far as possible, as soon as possible. And we're going to move down along the coast. I'm not entirely sure why my ship is speaking French. I guess we didn't have our own captains. Anyways, let's go ahead and lay the siege. No problems there. Uh, we're gonna disallow dropping battle because I haven't set that up. We're gonna continue the siege. We're gonna bring these up so they get to be part of the battle. Bring in some of their experience. We're gonna bring in the reinforcement troops as well. So four units of extra units of infantry. Really good. Um, it's gonna take a while until we convert this province because this one started with 20% Prussian. This started with nothing. And 
there's buildings here that'll contribute to uh, easily recruitment. So after this one, we'll probably have to do quite a few turns before we can move on to the next area of conquest. But for now, that is not what is at our plate. The siege of Eshigo is on our plate. And with that said, Let's draw the sword and go to war. And there is our target. The enemy castle. Problem with the Japanese castles is of course they build them in so many different tiers. Like a layered cake. Each one atop on the other. Which makes it rather difficult to take these castles. But I am sir. sure we will be able to take it. Now, one easy trick you can do is select canister and then set fire to the enemy walls. As we're doing that, I'm going to order my troops down onto the plane and from there we will make our advance on the enemy castle. So first things first is burn the walls. as much of it as possible and in burning it as well we're killing tons of enemy troops okay so reinforcements turning up here but the one with infantry is turning up from way over here right let's see what kind of angle we get here we get actually kind of a good angle at attacking this um, we're not going to get the support of being able to burn down walls and stuff but I think if we've put most focus up front here, then these guys can kind of come in at the very end and uh, destroy the enemy. So we can have this army start marching towards that area and the general that starts way over here can move in to join with them. Right. So we're continuing to blast this. Would be nice to, if we actually open the gate here. I'm not entirely sure how we managed to set fire to the house back here and not the wall which I was aiming for. Alright, my troops getting into position, preparing to uh, attack the walls here. It's obviously a lot easier to shoot down the troops on the wall, stationed on them, if the walls are broken up like this. It's easier for. Uh, the bullets to go through. It's also a lot easier if we can take out that tower which should be target as well. One good thing as well is that the enemy's mortars, which otherwise would have been pounding us to shreds, are facing the wrong way. They're facing this way, which is the least likely attack route as you cannot actually... Yeah, I you. Yeah, you can actually cross here. Um, but this is the least likely one because it's the highest wall. So most people are going to be dead just climbing the wall. Being attacked from tower, it's a pretty cramped area as well. There's no easy access moving forward here. So it's like they've put the cannons in the wrong way. They should have been facing... I mean, for security, they should have put one facing this way and one fa facing this way just to make sure that they cover all angles. Right. We have not made good progress on that tower. I'm going to take personal control and fire off a shot. Nicely enough. We're not doing a lot of damage on that tower. I'm going to see if we can't fire a canister on it. And maybe set the tower on fire. Right, my troops are ready enough. Or soon enough, they're ready. And we'll advance them. There's not that many men on the wall, I say. We're not facing this way, anyways. Right, we got canister going this way. Here comes the fourth shot. And then I'm going to make my own personal shot as well. And hopefully, maybe we can set that tower on fire. No, that was not the case. Well, we can't sit here and wait forever. Even if I will lose quite a bit of troops in the process here. We're going to start to advance. There we go. We set it on fire. Finally, 
as we've done that, I want to already prepare us for marching through the next one. Oh, they sent some troops out. I should have had troops sir. here Take actually covering of. this area. Let's see, how long we've made... They've made quite a bit of progress. I think they can march actually up to about here. Unimpeded by uh, the enemy. Okay, we've started to fire. Regiments have started opening fire on the enemies. And the enemies are not even returning fire. Oh, look at that. Now, now we can see why the reason is. They've got old, like, matchlocks compared to our new percussion-capped musket. So no wonder they're not able to... Uh, fire on us. Is my, ca my camera's been able to fire at this right? I believe so. Some of the troops there are already kind of routing almost. Due to the f oh, they are. Looks like they are firing back a little bit. Maybe. Yes, now they are. I was. Uh, I wasn't sure. Maybe it was the all the dust being thrown up by our projectiles hitting this area. We're not seemingly doing any damage to the, the area which I wanted to hit, so we'll break this part right here. The general's bodyguard is starting to lose troops as he's in the way of all the fire. Like, can we... Yeah, here we go. We'll set fire to this bit as well, making it even easier to break through. And... Um, after that is done, I actually want them to take down this tower because that will be like one of the last obstacles, more so than uh, the troops. Why aren't you firing? Oh, you are firing. You just waited to do so when I told you. Right, uh, they don't have troops along the wall here. They do have a levy back here, two levies in fact. We're not doing a lot of damage right now. I'm gonna order the troops forward now. And we're gonna also bring in these troops as support. We're starting to hit the tower, that's good. And um, I think we'll actually start to climb the walls and see if we can't make our way into the castle. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna go pretty thoroughly with this battle, even though... I mean, it's... pretty clear that I'm gonna win this, but we're probably gonna do a lot of these... battle, end up doing a lot of these battles, and... like, I can show it thoroughly how we break down a castle in the first one. And then it doesn't matter as much when I go ahead and uh, outdoor assault the others. I think we, yeah, we're getting shot here a little bit from these guys. Right, we're lining up. This tower might start shooting at this unit. Right, start climbing the walls. And once these sort of move towards the guys that are climbing over here, then I will order them up to uh, climb this part of the wall right here. I don't think the tower is actually firing on them, which is good. One thing that I do like about Shogun is the smoke, because it, it's like so massive, and it actually covers the battlefield. It makes a really cool effect of it. Right, so our troops are up on the wall. The troops here are throwing themselves forward. We will now climb. There's a risk here, I'm thinking, of you actually firing on the troops that are already up on the side of the walls here. Right, you need to keep climbing. This unit right here is not climbing. You know what? I want you 
to run through and claim this bit right here. Right, we're being killed just because not everyone is not actually setting up to climb, which is a damned issue. Like we need the entire regiment up there, otherwise the enemy will create local superiority. I will order down the general to support here. At the same time, they've not moved this unit yet, so I don't want to move forward here on this side just yet. But we'll uh, prepare this side anyways. Okay, so a lot of troops here are now just giving up. Right, I think we can sort of shock them into surrendering all the troops here. So I'm going to order a bayonet charge rather than line up to try and shoot them. The enemy general is leaving. You will be ordered to hold fire because I'm pretty sure that a lot of that is friendly fire. Okay, hurry up and get into position like that to face this regiment. Now they're drawing the regiments away. Now's the time to attack this side. Right, let's hurry see if we can't get these guys in order. I want the general forward so he can support with some of his abilities and at the same time see about organizing some of these regiments that made it up onto the wall. The enemy has gone ahead and charged here. I'm gonna go ahead and do all the boosts I can to make sure that we can kind of start breaking down. They've sent out uh, actually two regiments here. What I want to do is I want to burn this and I also want to burn the gates. Easiest way to uh, break down and then break down the tower as well. Right, I think the best way is actually to make it our way around these guys and start shooting from the flank here if I'm able to move around. And maybe I can get these guys onto the wall here and then get them out actually onto the side. Let's see, we can get this one around. Looks like this one's being called off to deal with these. We should leave these to be able to... This regiment is not happy. But it is holding. You should hopefully start shooting. And you know what? We'll, we'll throw this one in from this side here support the enemy. I think they're breaking actually. I think they're all breaking actually. The morale of the enemy troops is broken. The general has already left and what is left for us now is uh, just a slaughter of the garrison troops trying to leave the castle. Right, we're sending in literally everyone to claim the castle. And I think that's it. So with that said, this is our first victory. And we stand victorious.
A decisive victory. We deployed 4,000 men against the defenders. 2,000 of them. All defenders lost in the end. In terms of losses for ourselves, 400 were all which almost 25% was actually self-inflicted. The enemy only inflicted 333. Interesting number right there. Highest kills go to one of the colonial infantry, and if we go down here, we actually get one of the marines. Getting 205. Most likely, though, the marines were able to kill troops retreating. So entirely made up of slaughter, but there we have it. And we have successfully conquered our first territory. Now, unfortunately for us, this territory is probably quite unhappy with us conquering it, and it's going to be remain pro-shogunate for quite a while. Um, we're low on income. Currently, we're making 610 per turn. It's going to be a while until we're able to turn this around. This is a railway office. Now, we can't build railway right now, but it's good then that we... I guess not overextend ourselves by building um, economic infrastructure, but we keep this as military infrastructure in place here so that we can easily ship them later on once we actually get the railroads going, up and going. What I do think we should do though is... I'm not necessarily sure that a stables is needed right now, so we're going to tear them down. Traditional dojo would also be torn down, and cannon range, it's going to be take a while to get the cannon range up to a position where we can actually get proper cannons. So I think we'll tear that down as well, and we'll build temporary structures just to restore order quite quickly, so like a police station and stuff like that, and then we'll build a military barracks. And as we go along, do the nin ah the assassins are from the traditional dojo, I imagine. Yes, and we can build maximum limit three. You know what? Now when I think about it, traditional dojo will stay. Just enough so that I can get uh, three assassins and then we can scout along the um, borders here and we can keep that going in in front of the army as we continue. It's going to be important to know that we don't march into an ambush or we march into a, a province with a stronger army. At the same time, the ship will continue along the coast. Important thing is to find the other European nations. So we can start trading with them. With that said, I think we're off to a really great start. We've secured alliances, we've captured territory, and we're on a good way. With that said, what I want to end off this first episode with is I want to see about condensing more material in each episode because I feel like the campaigns drag out too long I think it's probably more interesting if I within you know the span of a year that I'm able to do a lot more campaigns rather than less so we will condense more into each episode and we'll sort of through editing through the magic of editing I'll save the interesting bit of each episode and I'll be able to condense them a lot more so there'll be less episodes per series but we'll be able to hopefully then get more series per each year because you guys come up with a lot of different good suggestions and you know being able to try a lot of different stuff I think would be interesting with that said let's end th this first episode right like this in terms of doing this and condensing it, it would be a lot easier if I could save and load however I want to kind of work my way through, the, work some m m editing magic into that as well. But since this is legendary, it will only save each time I press end turn, so I can't like 
you know, go back and do this save and that save. So in that sense, it'll add to the difficulty um, for me. But yeah, um, I think that'll be a good idea, and I think most of you will agree with that. And I don't know, really. There's nothing left to say, right? So I'll uh, leave you as I always leave you. Hopefully you guys enjoy this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.